welcome to the Guaranteed Growth Podcast. Today, we got a cool treat because we're going behind the scenes in a pre-service leadership meeting where Pastor Marco is talking about becoming a leader developer. So fasten your seatbelts, take good notes, and let's grow together. You know, we're in a place of multiplication and we're going to get position ourselves and it's, it's super important to position ourselves for, for multiplication in our lives. So there's a lot of work that needs to, uh, structural work that needs to happen right now to prepare for the harvest that God wants to ye- uh, give us as a church. Uh, he, he's the Lord of har- the harvest. He's the one that causes the growth. We know that. But he only releases it to those that are able to handle it. And, and what that means as an organization, it doesn't matter how many people can be saved or how many people can be discipled, um, the, he will only release what we're able to handle. Yeah. And so we need to continue increasing our capacity to handle more. And that means that we got to build more teams. We have to develop more leaders. And then, so I, I'm going to be spending a big part of my time developing leaders and, and God showed me you know we need to develop I kept saying a thousand DGs or a thousand leaders but it's it's actually 1728 so that's the number 1728 that God's given me and we're gonna and God's given us a strategy how to do it the plan we're gonna spend some time you know working on that but the idea is we cannot forget that it's all about making disciples and every single one of us need to not only be developed but we need to be become developers mm-hmm. and that means that we actually um, reproduce ourselves and if you call yourself a leader what you should eventually be producing is not just followers right. if you call yourself a leader you're actually a mature leader when you can produce a leader mm-hmm. that means somebody doing what you're doing that's that's the level and what happens in a lot of organizations and churches um, the, the pastor never develops to uh, becoming, or the leaders never develop to becoming leader developers. They only develop to the point where they could just have followers in the church, um, workers in the church, which is great, but that's one level of leadership. But the highest level of leadership is, is cr- developing leaders. Now, if you never get to the point of developing leaders, you cannot get to multiplication. The, the ministry can only multiply when there is a, a, a enough leaders for multiplication. That means I can produce a certain amount, but if I have a hundred leaders like me, then we could produ- then we could multiply what I'm doing. And, and that's why you never want to become a leader that becomes ego driven, that you feel like, man, they can't live without me. That's your insecurity. Oh, no one could do it like me. That's your that's your insecurity. If you keep saying that no one could do it like you, that means you're never going to develop. And this is a problem. You'll never. That's it's a lie of the devil, right. and you'll never develop someone with any type of talent. Mm-hmm. Because what's going to happen when you really think that even if someone came that's talented, you will get rid of them mm-hmm. because they, you'll feel deep down in your subconscious you'll start thinking they could replace me. And I'm so needed. And I feel, but that's insecurity. That's not a mature leader. A mature leader is able to to handle great talent, great potential, and bring it out of people and actually get them to do what you do, even at a greater level that you've done it. And that that's real great leadership. And you're never intimidated by somebody doing a great job or even maybe even doing it at another level or in a different way than you've done it. In, within the system and you start saying wait a second that's even more effective um, that's good leadership but we're going to have to really get there so I'm going to sp- we're going to spend a lot of time in leadership development um, launching out DGs because understand if we're believing that you know w- when we started this church I wrote it down within months or maybe of starting the church as I'm praying God so- showed me I'm going to show you I'm going to give you the template of building a 25,000 member church but that was like like months, like just in prayer time, like right away, I got that vision. I wrote it down, and, and but the word was template. I'm going to show you how to do it. So you can do it over and over yes. because the harvest is ripe. And we just don't need it in one location. We right. need it in locations across the world. You know, right now, there's around 300 and 
through, between 300,000 and 380,000 churches in America. Um, I was kind of looking, the average church is around 65 members a church. So it brings us around 24 million capacity of what we're reaching. But then there's 331 million people in the United States of America. And that means um, the majority of people, I mean, you're talking about over 306 million people aren't churched, mm-hmm. aren't reached. So there's a great demand in America, and, and we're not talking about the world, for discipleship and for churches to reach. So you can't have enough mega churches, and you can't, have, you can't make enough impact, but it's not going to happen by accident. Um, the, even the earth, the foundations of the earth were built with wisdom. That means there's a strategy, there's a skill, and then there's a work that we need to build and that God fills it with his anointing to be able to do the supernatural. So we're going to spend a lot of time building right now leadership, and we're going to get on, on that. And I believe that once we build 17 or 28 leaders that we got in our church, what's going to happen, it's going to, we're going to go into a place of breakthrough that we'll be able to duplicate that in any city and be able to actually have mega churches everywhere because if you don't have mega amount of leaders you cannot have a mega church you just can't do it we need mega teams you need mega leaders you need mega servants all that you need a mega form to be able to reach thousands of people if we have 1728 leaders or dg leaders then we could actually disciple right around 20,000 people that puts you right around that puts you in the scope of having a net that can handle the fish that God wants to send us. Understand, your organization and your size of your team are the capacity of your net. And that means if you, if you have a small team, you have a small net. And say, so, well, there's a lot of fish. It doesn't matter how many fish are out there. Your net and your capacity and your skill and, and your team, and, and it's, it's all you can, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that's why if you bring a low capacity leader and put them in position at this church, even though they're great communicators, gifting doesn't mean capacity. You're listening to the Guaranteed Growth Podcast. You know, gifting doesn't mean capacity. It's 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 the development of others and the team. I'll give you an example. Pastor Steele, he has 1,400 churches underneath him. How does he do it? Because he's learned how to develop people. He's learned how to develop people. He's learned how to develop teams. And he's learned how to develop leaders that are developers. So he's literally replaced himself over and over and over. And therefore, his organization can handle managing 1,400 churches, 4,000 students in the university. Um, he could manage a campus from, from San Antonio, Texas, all the way to Johannesburg, South, you know, South Africa. He could do all of it because he has the team to be able to handle it. God will not send us thousands and tw- tens of thousands of people until we have the structure to do it. You understand that? You build the boat, <laughs> then we can fill it with the animals. You know, if, if you don't build a boat, the ark, the animals aren't coming. Right. And that's exactly, you give God the jars and then God will fill the jars. It's just the way it is. So we're going to build, we got to build, we do the super, we do the natural, God does the supernatural, but there's a work in it. And of course we need the grace of God, but I, I really believe we could do it. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it, um, but we're going to really be focused on it. And um, it's going to come as simple as this. If you call yourself a leader, I'm going to ask you to launch out 12 discipleship groups. That's all I'm asking you to do. And if you're a leader, you should have faith that I could develop 12 people right. and launch out 12. You should have the faith to be able to do right. that. Yeah. And, I, and, and the idea, if you're not focused on it, you'll never do it. Right. And, and un, the greatest thing you could ever do is launch out, play, le- develop leaders that could actually take care of people and teach them the word of mm-hmm. God. You got to be able to do that. And, and we're talking about if, if, you, if you had that responsibility to develop 12 people that could actually, and understand, you're not going to develop 12 people if you, don't, you can't even lead yourself to do a DG. Mm-hmm. If you can't lead yourself to do DG on a consistent basis and, and you can't even recruit people to your own DG, mm-hmm. you know, realistically, I don't care how talented and gifted you are, um, you're limited. Mm-hmm. You're limited and, and you're really not ready to go to the next level. 
because you can't be consistent leading yourself to your own DG. You, uh, understand you're, you're capping your own potential. So you're, you're, you unleash the potential when you actually become a leader developer. So be careful that you don't get busy with, with, with to-dos that you've in your to-do list that you're really busy on, you've, you're focusing on minors instead of majors. And you're not developing yourself and then becoming a leader developer. But understand, you'll never become a leader developer until you become an effective leader yourself. And so I, I got potential. Stop believing in your potential and believe in your reality. This is where I'm at. I, I, well, I, I could do DG. We'll do it. I could do it every week. We'll do it every week. I could develop people. We'll do it. Develop people. You know, I didn't get to this place in developing leaders um, without being faithful in developing a DG group or a small group. I, I've done it my whole life. And, and where I could, if I could do it there, I could do it everywhere. Uh, you know, so anyways, just let's look at that. Um, that's where we're headed. And, and God's going to give us more. He's giving us churches. Um, we're going to, you know, this, learn the prophetic word that God gave us. We'd accomplish more in one year than we did our whole ministry. We're starting to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our in part, I mean, our anniversary service are bigger than ever. Mm-hmm. Bigger than ever. It's probably double of what we've done. And we, and we did it in one year. Mm-hmm. You know, everything started in the double, you know, and, and some of it's going to start quadrupling. We're going to start seeing 10. You're going to start seeing multiplication of 10. These things are happening and more's coming. Right. I mean, we're going to literally right. go right. And under our, our leadership from nine churches that we're supervising to we could be going from nine to 70 um, within a month or two that we're supervising. So that's 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 tens of I mean, that's like multiply everything by nine or eight. You know, but those things are happening now. And right. but you gotta receive the anointing of the house mm-hmm. and be willing and say, I want to, I want to do what you do, Pastor. Then you're gonna have to do what I've done mm-hmm. and what I'm doing to be able to do it. I, I'm just telling you, there's no shortcuts. Mm-hmm. So stop trying to like come up with your own pattern. Uh, Paul said, follow my pattern of living and follow the example. Follow those who follow my pattern of living. You know, the idea there's a pattern, and if you break the pattern, this all is gonna happen. You're not gonna see the results. And I'm not saying lose your personality. Use your personality in the pattern. Right. Mm-hmm. But don't change the pattern. Right. Because there's an anointing in the pattern. Right. Right. And when we, when, we're, when, we're, when we follow, see, there's a spirit of rebellion that wants you to out tweak mm-hmm. what God has given you. Mm-hmm. So, you, see, you don't get God's results of success when you tweak the instructions. Just like you wouldn't do with a, a piece of cake. You wouldn't do it as an electrician. Right. Uh, there's a pattern to this. And if you break those laws... This is what's going to happen. You're not going to get the results. Right. Well, I kind of did it. You didn't do it. That's rebellion. Mm-hmm. And so you're actually under a spirit of deception and spirit of independence and a, and a spirit that doesn't submit to God because it's God's vision. And what you're going to see is you're not going to get the results and you're not going to get the inheritance because sons and daughters of the ministry yeah. are the ones that get it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's passing on an inheritance yeah. and then taking really care of it and making sure we're doing it. That's good. But it, so we're in a really great time today. Um, a big offering. Um, this is a sacred offering. And, um, and we're going to be talking about uh, how God builds a church. This is going to be a great leadership teaching. Um, but, and you're going to see how God builds a church. And you're going to see why he builds it the same way every single time. You're going to see how he does it. Um, but there's a reason why there's an offering. Why he doesn't build a church without an offering. You're going to find out why he does it that way. There's no other way to do it but that way. So we're going to figure out why he does it that way. And any church that's ever been built, the 300,000 and 380,000 churches that have been built in America were all built the same exact way that we're doing it today with an offering. Um, so um, it has to be built that way. And I'll tell you why it needs to be built that way. So we're going to find out you know, the four steps of building a church. And then we're going to talk about the three blessings that come with building a church for God. And they're, um, they're supernatural blessings that we can't afford not to have in our, in our community, in our family, in our lives. Okay? So it's going to be great. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast with Pastor Marco Garcia. And we want to encourage you to reflect on today's meeting and apply and teach what you have learned in this meeting. This has been the Guaranteed Growth Podcast. 
Let's continue to grow together. Have a great day.